This isn't a supernatural testimony. It's just more of a teaching that um, God is doing. I, mean, I don't know where to stand on this stage. Um, but I, I got this dog, <laughs> and it's an Australian Shepherd, and I've never had an Australian Shepherd before, and that's why they're a whole new breed. And so when Pastor John shares about, you know, um, having uh, the Holy Spirit beside you in the seat, you know, and acknowledging his presence, well, that's the way that this dog is. He's literally beside me the entire time. Wherever I walk, he's just like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And he reminds me so much of the Holy Spirit because I feel like sometimes the Holy Spirit is like right beside me. Okay, what are we going to do now? And how are we going to do this? And, and ever since I, well, for a long time now, it's just this constant conversation. And part of it is because I, you know, I do live alone, so it's just me and, and him. But I was out in the back 40 with my little Australian shepherd, and we were out, and he was just running all over the place and what have you. And what he does is he runs ahead of me about, I don't know, 20, 50 yards, and then he stops, and he turns around, and he makes sure that I'm there. And then if he sees me, he's like, yay, game on, and he runs right back to me, right? So I was having a devious moment, and he runs away from me. So instead of standing there and like, oh, yeah, 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 come to me, I went down low, and I went down like this, and I didn't say anything. And he looked, and he didn't see me as I normally was, and he, like, stood there for about, I don't know, maybe about 10 seconds, and he turned tail, I mean tail down, and he ran so far in the opposite direction, he was terrified. And he just took off running, and I was yelling, I'm like, stop, stop, don't run so far. But immediately the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, flee evil, flee evil. And this is what that looks like, because so many times, we want to experiment with evil. We want to just kind of touch it. We kind of want to see it. And we want to kind of just, you know, experiment with evil. And he says, we need to flee evil. You need to run. When you sense it, when you see it, when you, when you look ahead and you don't know it, he says you need to turn and you need to run. And there are so many things, so many times that people have crossed over into things that they thought, well, I'm just going to try it out. I'm just going to see what it's like. I'm just going to watch this one video. I'm just going to have this conversation. But once you cross over into that, it's hard then to separate yourself from it. And so many of our friends and our families and what have you have crossed over into an arena that they didn't recognize that they were crossing into. And now there's a whole process of, uh, of having to separate themselves of that. But the, the scripture says, and John touched on it a week or two ago, that he can cleanse you from a sin consciousness. All right, so evil is simply stepping over and and uh, trying to acquire a pleasure or a desire in a way that is not godly, to fulfill a need that is not godly met, but to fill a need in our own way. And we are to separate ourselves from that. When, when the Lord says that I will meet your need, he will meet your need in the time of your need. He will meet you. He will come to you. Whatever it is, if it's peace, patience, whatever it is, he will meet you in that need. But when you begin to seek to have your need met in a way that is separate and apart from him, that is evil. And God says, as that little Elsie ran from you because he didn't know you and he was afraid of you and he was scared, he fleed evil. And he said, in the same way, in the same way, we need to flee evil. We need to run from it. Every need will be met and every desire will be fulfilled in him, by him, and through him, and only him. <laughs>